Hi everyone, I'm Frida Johansson and I'm 15 years old. Coming fall and semester, I'm starting secondary school with a major in science and music. And today's class is about how math and physics fits with music. So today I'm going to talk about the Pythagorean fifth circle and Pythagoras comma. And for this exercise, I've already assumed that you know about the Pythagorean theorem. It says that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. But again, the focus of today's class is another less famous algorithm that he also discovered. But first of all, who was Pythagoras? Well, he was quite a character who was a Greek philosopher, great mathematician, and rather scientist who lived 580 before Christ. Again, Pythagoras did not only specialize in trigonometry, but also found some very interesting mathematical links in the structure of tonation and notation. And another of his groundbreaking algorithms is the Pythagorean fifth circle and Pythagoras comma. The piano has 88 keys, 7 octaves and a frequency spectrum from A0, which has 27 Hz and C8, which has 4186 Hz. And you may wonder what an octave is. Well, an octave includes 8 semitones from C to C or F to F. And this has a relevance on the fifth circle. This was just some fun facts, but still related to the fifth circle, which I'm now going to talk about. So, what is the fifth circle? The fifth circle works like a clock. It has one to 12 tones. It consists of two pitches, major and minor keys. And the minor keys is the corresponding key signatures to the major keys. But what's the meaning of the corresponding key signatures? Well, A minor is one and a half semitone lower than C major, for example. And by increasing fifths, or more specifically, continuing five semitones clockwise from the top of the circle, the, C, the key of C has no charts or flats, walking from C, five semitones from C, C, D, E, F, G, G has uh, one sharp, and D has two sharps, and so on. And if you're proceeding fifths counterclockwise, or the more fancy word, walking subdominant, you know, if you're going to the left from the apex, uh, the key of F has one flat, the key of B has two flats, and so on. And at the bottom of the circle, where the key of F sharp and G flat meets, it creates two unharmonically equivalent notes, which I'm going to talk about later. But the same happens with the corresponding key signatures where E flat and D sharp overlap. But Pythagoras discovered that there was a problem in the system. 12 fifths above each other should be the same as seven octaves on top of each other, but it's not. It's a little delta, it's a little interval, it's a little difference. And that difference is called a Pythagorean comma. And the frequency ratio for a perfect fifth is 3 divided by 2, 3 to 2, or 1 and a half. It's all the same, but you could spell it in different ways. And if we're multiplying 12 fifths with each other, the answer is 129.7463. And if we're multiplying 7 octaves on top of each other, you know, an octave has the frequency ratio 2, or 2 divided by 1, it's the same. Um, the answer is 128. This small delta here, this small difference between 100, 129.7463 and 128 is Pythagoras comma. So as you see in this calculation, seven octaves is not the same as 12 fifths. And Pythagoras comma could even be defined as a small difference between two unharmonically equivalent notes like C and B sharp or D flat and C sharp. And this ratio could be calculated as that seven octaves removes from 12 fifths like this. Three divided by two raised to 12 divided by two raised to seven equals three raised to 12 divided by two raised to 19 equals 500 
31,441 divided by 524,288 equals 1.01364. And if you if you want to write it in an easy way, you could write it in cents. But first you have to know that an octave has 1,200 cents. So 1,200 1, times logarithm 2, 531,441 uh, with 524,288, which becomes 24 cents. The Pythagorean comma causes a 12-pointed star to fail to close. And the 12-pointed star represents the Pythagorean scale. And each line in 12-pointed star represents a just perfect fifth. And that small gap here has a central angle of 7.038 degrees. But how do you calculate this? Well, this angle of really 7 degrees is 23.46% of 30 degrees. And how do you know the gap past 30 degrees? Well, it's pretty logical actually. If you divide the whole circle's de degrees, which, which is 360, with the 12 tones, the simple answer is 30 degrees. Alright, why do you have to know all this? For all kinds of musicians, composers, pianists, pop stars, whatever, you have to know all the basics of circle of fifths and understand the relationship among the 12 pitch classes, particularly if you're playing chords and make transpositions. And when pieces or songs modulate to a new key, these small relations are often related to the circle of fifths. And if you are a tuner, you are dealing with the Pythagorean comma, because you have to understand this small delta between 7 octaves and 12 just perfect fifths. Alright, thank you for watching this and I hope you all enjoyed it. Bye!